Welcome back folks, my name is Lars Snow Meal and today we're gonna be talking about Netflix The Witcher Season 2. So after two years of wait and due to everything which is happening in 2020 and 2021, a lot of production plans had to be delayed and cancelled, that's why uh, the second season of The Witcher was so long in development and it was actually a surprise that they able to finish it for the end of 2021 due to the scope and size of the production team. So before we begin, uh, this will be a spoiler review of the show so I will be going into major spoilers that's the only way for me to properly um, review this so if you haven't watched the show and you don't want to know what happens just you know this was a warning before we begin now without further wasting your time let's get into the Netflix The Witcher season 2 review so, as I said, automatically when the show came out, there were a lot of mixed opinions regarding the books and how much does the show actually follow the books. Well, first off, we have seen in the second season as well, in the first season, that um, Lauren uh, Schmidt, the showrunner, is gonna be taking some routes which deviate from the books themselves, and obviously those things are changed because this is an adaptation of the show, and I will be going into that as well, because... When something is an adaptation, obviously you don't expect it to be the same as the books or when, as people like to also compare it to games um, of The Witcher. And it's never going to be that because obviously this adaptation is going to be an opinion of one person, usually a showrunner, which has the final say on everything regarding the project, which goes from casting to the dialogue which is written in the scenes to the overall uh, structures of the scenes through the entire seasons of the show. And for example, one of the biggest things in the second season which people have automatically started sending me is the death of Eskel, where Eskel in the second episode turns into a Leshy and ultimately gets killed by Geralt because, well, there was a no way to save him. Now, obviously, that's something which doesn't happen in the books. Eskel is well alive in the books and obviously in the games, which happens after the book itself. And again, this is an adaptation. This shouldn't be like uh, the same as the books and the games. But at the same time, there had to be a certain logic behind the death. And the logic behind the death when it comes to Lauren Schmidt is that they needed a heavy emotional, how would I say, benchmark for Geralt to start, you know, accepting the fate and Siri and everything he has to do around it more seriously and to kind of speed up that process. Before that, they actually wanted to make a new Witcher, an original Witcher, which, and the only, I guess, the only purpose of that new Witcher was to die in the show, to have that uh, certain uh, change in Geralt, which obviously would never leave an emotional impact as you would with Esco. But the problem comes when you introduce the Witchers, and the introduction to the Witchers was very poor, first off, because there were like 20 Witchers in Kaer Morhen, which doesn't happen in the books as well. Um, and again, I'm comparing it to the books, but I'm giving you my opinion on it later on. So, the Kaer Morhen itself, when it comes to dynamic, is very strange, because once you enter, you have like 20 Witchers inside, you have all kinds of courtesans in there, and it's basically a red light district. Um, overall, in a lot of scenes, it, it basically becomes a red light district, which is entirely different than the book version, especially because Vesemir doesn't like those women to be in Kaer Morhen. And the second of all is when you try to use a, a Witcher where that people already know to create that emotional impact, which wasn't the case because at first... I have nothing against the actor who played Eskel, but at the same time, the actor portraying Eskel was extremely weak in that regard. He wasn't looking like Eskel, he was too young for Eskel, he was too... He wasn't so rough, it, I don't know, in face and everything. He was too smooth, in my opinion, to be portraying Eskel and how we imagine Eskel, not just from the games, but from the books as well. And especially, um, to be downed as easy like that with uh, and cursed by the lesson, it wasn't really logical at all. And obviously, at the same time, when you don't really identify with an actor because, sadly, the actor was not able to fulfill the role properly, you don't really achieve anything. You just anger the fans because the decision behind it was not logical. And the, also, that comes with other things which happen in Kermon, and especially with Cirilla at the end in the, uh, the last two episodes, which don't have much to do with the books and the ideas that which which uh, that different characters have. Like, for example, when Vesemir said, oh, I cannot wait to make more witchers with Elder Blood, I was like, what? 
Vesemir doesn't want to make more witchers. It's not how it's supposed to be done with Elder Blood. And Vesemir is actually the person who is actively against creating new witchers because he knows what that will bring. And when you at the same time present Kaer Morhen as this bustling castle filled with all kinds of witchers, you automatically deny what the books and the idea of the Witcher set in this world was supposed to be, where they were supposed to be this dying breed, where the, where you, where bringing Ciri is supposed to bring that family back together. And the perfect way to show that would be to enter in an empty hall with the, with the Witchers that were in the books that were sitting there, and then this dynamic starts. When all of this starts with all kinds of Witchers and with Ciri, there is no dynamic in itself which makes it substantial, which makes it good, which makes it unique in that sense. And of course you will say like, oh, stop comparing the books. Alright, alright, I'm not gonna be comparing the books now. But even as a, as a show which goes a little bit into fan fiction, goes a little bit into this you know, change from the original material, what if that change isn't good? What if that change doesn't ultimately help the story but makes it a little bit more complicated and those decisions which are ultimately made are not good? What happens then? And when someone thinks they can tell a better story than the original author in some areas, that becomes a problem. Now I'm fully aware that some scenes and some things can be changed obviously to fit the narrative of the TV series because you have to fit the story and in, in, you know, a limited amount of episodes and a limited amount of minutes and in the limited amount of seasons, which is not easy to plan out. But when you convolute yourself with a lot of decisions which don't make sense, you're ultimately just going to complicate everything which happens later on and ultimately is going to be very much different than it happens in the books itself. And the worst problem is, is that the characters themselves are much different in some areas where the characters, when they become someone else, they stop being the characters that are made and the reason they were made in that way, and it completely ruins the dynamic of the show, especially when it comes to Vesemir. Kim Bodnia as Vesemir was great. The only problem is, on the screen screenplay side, it wasn't good. Um, it was all over the place on that sense. Now, the show itself, as a show, from the technical perspective, when it comes to cinematography, when it comes to actors, I know some people don't like actors, they don't like Mimi Nadvani playing Fringilla because either she doesn't fit the role or she's black or this or that. Honestly, I don't care about that for as long as the person can portray the role. And I think uh, Mimi Nadvani is doing a great job as Fringilla. She's trying hard. Don't, don't think that she isn't. She's trying really hard to bring a really good character and to really shape it as is. So from that side, they even have the actors, they even have the actors who are willing to play those roles, who know how to play those roles. They have Henry, who is one of the biggest Witcher fans out there, who is the biggest Witcher fan on that set, I believe, and who is really trying hard to portray the character that will um, be a service to fans and to the community and to obviously um, find the, the best way to portray Geralt of Rivia in that sense. He's really trying hard. A lot of people around him are also trying hard. Now, again, at the same time, I'm not saying that every single casting is good. Um, for me, the only thing which does obviously matter is acting. If acting is not good, I don't care how you look you're just not fit for the show, which I do believe that some actors here in this show that people doubted, I think they actually did a masterful job. If you go to also to Dijkstra, um, Dijkstra casting was also great. Too bad Dijkstra didn't get more, um, you know, scenes out there, but I think he did a masterful job at, at crafting what it is. But, you know, to go back to the books themselves. So, the first episode of The Witcher with Nivellen, that was quite cool, even though it was also changed from the books because Ciri is never there. Ciri does not appear in that short story. They obviously did it for the narrative reasons where Geralt is going to be go going there and then he's going to be going with her to Kaer Morhen. So from, it's logical to have her as well there because, you know, it just happened and you're trying to create this daughter-father, uh, you know, this uh, relationship, which is okay. Like, the first episode itself, it started off very well and then it kind of just went, you know, overboard on, on, you know, from the second episode and then when things start happening. So, one thing, if we're going to be talking now about the books, one thing which bothers me around Lauren is the statement she is giving. So, there is an article on IGN where Lauren said this, for everyone who is saying that um, they, they sh sh shouldn't be following the books, it's their own adaptation, okay, I absolutely, okay. Like, if the show is not following the books, then it's okay. But it's important 
to acknowledge that and not share mixed messages because let me read this and this is a statement from Lauren. Talking to IGN, The Witcher showrunner and executive producer Lauren Schmidt History said of the seven season plan, it would be a straight translation of the books. I think there is just so much material that I don't feel the need to start inventing my own to keep it going. We really tried to stick to a book a season, she elaborated. We did combine some of the short stories for the first season, and there are things in the short stories that we want to continue to return to, because there was just too much, uh, so much good material to tell in 8 episodes. So for instance, that's why we did A Grain of Truth at the beginning of this season, and it's our hope to keep peppering those in as we go. So obviously, when you say things like that, it's gonna be a, a straight translation of the books, and then things obviously drastically change, it just sends the wrong message of what you're trying to achieve. And it's better, in my opinion, to keep things a little bit more open and to say, look, okay, we're not following the books. And if you tell to people we're not following the books all the way, there's gonna be an adaptation in that sense, people are going to agree on that sense, and people are gonna be more lenient, because Honestly, if I never had read the books, I would have think, you know, this is a, a, a good show. If you haven't read the books, if you don't know those decisions, there is nothing wrong with this show from that sense. Like, obviously, it has obvious problems when it comes to the script. Like, there is no denying that. But as a show itself, it's not that bad. It could have been much worse. But the problem is... They're slowly trying to get the core idea of the Witcher and the vibe of the Witcher out and replace it with things which don't matter and change the story into something which is ultimately just going to ruin the future story. And that's my problem. That's my problem with this show. Is that they're making decisions where those decisions are not fully fleshed out and you don't really have enough time to identify yourself with the characters you meet, and you don't have enough time to create an emotional bridge, to create an emotional um, connection where the killing of that character, like Eskil, for example, is going to give you that ripple effect. Because the Witcher fans who have read the books, it didn't hit them like an emotional, oh, yeah, Geralt, do something. It was more like anger, like, why would you do it? It, it didn't really achieve anything, and... I don't think even in Geralt that achieves too much. Especially because at the same time, Geralt also lost a lot of other brothers from the castle itself. If you put in 20 witchers in the castle, then those 20 witchers are Geralt's brothers. He knows about them. So from that logic, more death than Eskel is gonna change something in Geralt because he's losing actively his witcher brothers which were in that castle. That's those issues you create when you include more witchers and you change the story because now so only the, the death of Eskel matters because we know his name and every other witcher that you put in who died no one cares about him in that sense it doesn't make any logic to the to the the order of the wolf which is which are the witchers you know and it doesn't it just creates a convoluted story but yeah now, when it comes to other stuff, obviously, when it comes to series training, when it comes to other actors as well, going from uh, from Lambert to Cohen, I think all of them did a great job. I think, you know, from the material they got, they, they, they were good, but the problem is, obviously, when it comes to screenplay, when it comes to dialogue, they're actors. They have to say and, you know, repeat lines which were given to them by the writers and the producers, and if those things lack, then obviously your actor cannot really give 100% of themselves. So, that's one of the main problems here. It's just the writing. Like, technical part of the show, they know how to do it. The, the fighting scenes, great. All of that. But the problem is, when it comes to emotional attachment, when it comes to dialogue and silence and connecting characters through dialogue, it's very weak and I don't know. Like, that's the thing. It's an okay show. I don't mind it. I actually enjoyed it. Um, when it comes to the changes from the book, I don't agree with them. At the same time, do I think the show is really bad? No, absolutely not. Like, no. But obviously, if you want it to be as the books, it's never going to be that, sadly. So, people are asking if the third season and the next season is going to be different. Technically, every other season can be different because they learn from their mistakes. But at the same time, Usually, the main vibe of the show is gonna stay the same, so the first two seasons, how they look and how they generally work, 
those are the seasons how we're gonna be for the future and i doubt that things are going to change drastically when it comes to the vibes and when it comes to decisions of the showrunner because at the end of the day she has the final say there are also other problems with the character going from yennefer who's now trying to be different to siri than she was supposed to be in the books which also changes that dynamic um the dynamic with uh, vesemir has changed the there was there was no proper dynamic between the witchers so that's that's it like that's the problem it just it just wasn't put in correctly in my opinion it just wasn't done well in that sense it's still a good show but um it's important to know what to expect again if you're expecting books you're not getting that you're getting netflix adaptation and knowing netflix they're obviously going to change a lot of things and no for me personally casting is not a problem not because if someone's black, white, yellow, I don't care. For as long as the person can act and portray the character that the person was tasked to portray. If that's good, that's good. If they help the story and help the, the, the show, that's good. If they don't, then, you know, whatever you are, it doesn't matter. It's best to remove that person from the show. But sadly, the biggest problem is with the writing. Everything else just suffers from it. But also at the same time... It's not that bad. But I understand why people are mad because of the book changes, because of the statement said by Lauren that they're not going to change those things. So obviously when you said you give these two confusing messages, things are never going to be as they are. So that's my review. Overall, I think it's fine. I'm, it's nothing crazy. It's nothing like which I'm going to remember for, for an entire year. Um... It's decent and that's about it when it comes to my opinion of the Netflix The Witcher. If you enjoy it, great. Enjoy it. That's amazing. That's great. If you don't, then, well, everyone has their reasons for not enjoying the show and that's totally okay and alright. So, thank you everyone for watching. Tell me down below what do you think about all of this and don't forget to also follow us on Twitter and Discord. And yeah, check us out on Patreon as well. Also, huge thanks to my current Patreon supporters. Thank you so much for um, donating your money. It really helps out the channel. And this is it. Last Nomil signing out. Stay classy, everyone. And I'll see you in the next one. Bye-bye.